This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. I really wanted to be, you know, a good security guard. I didn't want to be like, here's my demo tape, and here I want to be an actor, and all that, because I, I wasn't even into that at right. the time. Before Terry Crews was a bona fide TV star with recurring roles on shows like Everybody Hates Chris, Arrested Development, The Newsroom, Are We There Yet, and Brooklyn Nine Nine. Chicken, my potatoes, my pasta, my meatballs. Ham, my yogurt. Oh, that's a lot of yogurt. Before appearing in movies like Scary Movie 5, Bridesmaids, and White Chicks. And I need you. And I miss you. And now I wonder. Before becoming the face of Old Spice. Who said that? Is that my left bicep? No. It was my abdominals. Before Terry Crews would be nip syncing Ebony and Ivory with Jimmy Fallon. Ebony, Ivory, living in perfect harmony. I've actually wanted to tell Terry's Incredible Before Their Famous Story for some time. It was like one of my first to do's, and then people just started sending in so many requests I never got to it. Anyway, he grew up in a household riddled with domestic abuse and made it all the way to the NFL where he experienced a different kind of abuse. The NFL has an abusive relationship with its players. It's no, it's like a pimp and a prostitute. And before making it as an actor, he worked as a courtroom sketch artist, he did temp jobs, he swept factory floors, he was an extra in training day, and he worked as part of the security detail for Ice Cube. I was on next Friday, because I was like the biggest guy, so they would assign me right outside his trailer. And he parked and the whole thing, and I'm like, hey, Mr. Q. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCretton, documenting the remarkable life and career of Terry Crews, part of fame, here for you on Before They're Famous. In the past, I've covered other actors and comedians, including Ryan Gosling, Tommy Wiseau, and Hugh Jackman. I've also covered other athletes like Tristan Thompson, Ezekiel Elliott, and Kyrie Irving. Be sure to check those out and let me know, as always, in the comments down below who you want me to document next. This would be a good part to start. I can't. I can't do it. Nothing special about me. Nothing, not one thing special about me except the fact that I had the courage to do it. The courage to just go out there. Terry Allen Cruz was born on July 30th, 1986 in Flint, Michigan. He grew up alongside his brother Marcel in a strict Christian household. He was raised mainly by his mother Patricia, who was a housewife, before taking up a receptionist job at McLaren Flint. His father, Terry Cruz Sr., also known as Big Terry, worked at General Motors for 30 years. Big Terry was a dedicated hard worker, but he was also an alcoholic who frequently abused young Terry's mother, as Terry put it. I used to watch this happen over and over again. It was a post traumatic stress experience for me. I used to watch my father hit my mother in the face and watch her go down. And there were some things that just affected me more than I don't think anyone could realize. For years, Terry had a serious issue with his father over the abuse, but in an interview with the Huffington Post, Terry Crews has gone on to explain how he eventually came to forgive his father. I started giving Big Terry credit for what he did do. He was a good earner, he was a good provider, I never excused what had been wrong, but also being able to see the positive finally changed my perspective. Terry also explained that for better or for worse, his childhood made him who he is today. And if he could choose for himself any parents in the world, he would still pick Patricia and Big Terry. I felt so helpless when I was a kid that I said, I will never be that helpless, ever. So I said, I gotta get strong. Terry began working out at a young age, and fitness has been a lifelong pursuit. Terry is 49 years old at the time of this recording, but he still exercises for two hours each and every day. Let's take a quick look at his workout routine. From a young age, Terry was a kid with many talents. He was athletic, he was strong, and also very artistic. He played both basketball and football throughout school, but before that, he got attention for his drawing and his painting talents as a child. In fact, Terry's first job in entertainment was drawing courtroom sketches for the worst murder case in Flint, Michigan history. Still, his lifelong dream was to become an actor. But despite his many talents, Terry wasn't perfect. From the age of 12, Terry began watching pornography, pretty typical stuff, but for Terry, it was the beginning of what would become a secret addiction that would last for years and years. You know, for years, 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 my dirty little secret was that I was addicted to pornography for years. Terry would continue to struggle with his porn addiction until around 2009 to 2010. He talked about the struggle for the first time in his 2014 autobiography, Manhood, How to Be a Better Man or Just Live with One. 
and in a series of YouTube and Facebook videos released in 2016. But obviously, we're not there yet. Some people deny, they say, hey man, you know, you can't really be addicted to pornography, there's no way. But I'm gonna tell you something, if day turns into night and you are still watching, you probably got a problem. For high school, Terry attended Flint Southwestern Academy. After graduating, he got a Chrysler sponsored art scholarship to attend the Interlochen Center for the Arts in Interlochen, Michigan. Following this, he got an art excellence sponsorship to go to Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan. But they probably took one look at Terry and realized he would be a strong asset on the football field. He was a walk on player for the WMU Broncos and earned a full ride athletic scholarship, all conference honors, and the 1988 Mid American. American Conference Championship, but football was both a blessing and a curse for Terry as he suffered multiple concussions during school. I remember going to class when my head hurt. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Getting knocked out. And they're like, well, you know what? You got a free education. You need to just be happy. I was like, oh, hey, man. Terry also said that he had trouble attending his art classes because football practice was eight hours a day. But he did find time to marry the love of his life, the former beauty queen and gospel singer, Rebecca King. Together, the couple have three daughters, Azriel, born in 1990, Tara, born in 1999, and Winfrey, born in 2004, and one son, Isaiah, born in 2007. I have a son! He also has a stepdaughter, Naomi, born to Rebecca back in 1989. Terry was selected by the Los Angeles Rams in the 11th round of the 1991 NFL Draft. His pro ball career would include stints for six different NFL teams, including the Philadelphia Eagles, the Washington Redskins, and the San Diego Chargers. Terry Crews called for the penalty. After the penalty, of who made? No question about it. During his time in the NFL, Terry was always at the end of the roster and often got cut from teams. In order to survive, he relied on his visual art skills. After getting cut from a team, he would go back into the locker room and ask the players if they wanted their portraits painted. He stated, It would literally take me about two months to do a painting and they would give me like $5,000 and I would survive off that. My whole family survived off that. After retiring from the NFL in 1997, Terry moved out to Los Angeles to pursue a career in Hollywood. But things didn't come together right away. He was doing temp jobs, sweeping factory floors, and working as part of Ice Cube's security detail during the filming of Next Friday. The relationship would eventually lead to Terry's breakout film role in Friday After Next. The first motherfucker get out of here, I swear I'm gonna beat this shit. Craig and Dana. Oh. Just the niggas I need to see. But this was not Terry's first role as an actor in 1999. He appeared as T-Money on the short-lived TV series Battle Dome. He played Vincent in The Sixth Day in 2000 and in 2001. He had an uncredited blank and you'll miss it role as a gang member in the Denzel Washington masterpiece, Training Day. Jay! You disloyal fool ass bitch made punk. Yay! After appearing in Friday After Next, Harry picked up a role in 2002 serving Sarah and won in an episode of The District. He appeared in Deliver Us from Eva, Malibu's Most Wanted, Platinum, and Badasses in 2003. The next year, he appeared in Starsky and Hutch, CSI Miami, and Soul Play. But his most memorable role would be as Latrell Spencer in White Chicks. You know what they say once you go black, you're gonna need a wheelchair. <laughs> Hey, Latrell. I had a great time last night. He would go on to appear on My Wife and Kids, All of Us, and Harsh Times in 2005. That year, he also appeared as Cheeseburger Eddie in The Longest Yard. Till he cries like a baby back bitch. <laughs> baby back bitch. Baby back bitch. <laughs> Adam Sandler must have taken a shine to Terry because he would repeatedly bring him back for movies like Click, Sandy Wexler, and The Ridiculous Six. In 2005, Terry picked up the role of Julius in Chris Rock's hit sitcom Everybody Hates Chris. The show ran until 2009, and while working on the series, Terry continued to work on numerous other projects. He was in 2008's Get Smart as Agent 91. He worked as a voice actor on The Boondog voicing several roles from 2005 to 2007. He also appeared in the Mike Judge cult classic, Idiocracy, as President Camacho. President Camacho. 
In 2009, Terry worked on Middlemen, Gamer, and Terminator Salvation. The next year, he was in The Expendables and Lottery Ticket, and this is around the time he overcame his pornography addiction by going to rehab. From 2010 to 2012, he starred in the TV adaption of Are We There Yet as Nick Persons. During that time, he also snagged a role as the boot camp instructor in Bridesmaids. He also started uploading videos to YouTube in 2011. Since then, he's dropped over 60 videos and built up a following of over 200,000 subscribers. In 2012, he appeared as Hail Caesar in The Expendables 2 and got a recurring role on The Newsroom. In 2013, he picked up perhaps his most iconic role to date, the role of Terry Jeffords in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Hey, ball. If Savant was to do anything to harm this precinct, would I destroy him? Answer uncertain. Since then, he's gone on to pick up more roles than I can name. Uh, 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 are we there yet? Yes. Got 100 episodes. Yes. And, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine 3. And that ain't even counting the reality stuff I've done. At the time of this recording, there's four new Terry Crews projects to look out for. In 2017, he will appear in Where's the Money? And Do You Want to See a Dead Body? He'll also be in Sorry to Bother You, scheduled for a 2018 release. And he's currently filming the movie The Will of Voice. Or Willoughby's. There it is. Recently, Terry Crews was also trending in the news. In the midst of the Harry Weinstein revelation, Terry bravely came forward about his own experience of being groped by a powerful Hollywood executive. Terry had been manhandled at a party in 2016, but did not publicize the incident at the time for fear of retaliation. Through the years, Terry's been an artist, an athlete, a writer, an activist, and an actor. So what's next for Terry Crews? I'm not even done. I'm designing furniture right now. Mm -hmm. I have my own furniture line out right now. Man, this dude can do it all. As for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCred. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I've got two more suggested for you down below. Be sure to check out our playlist on actors and comedians. We've merged those two together. And let me know, as always, who's next in the comments down below. I really wish I could boom, boom, boom. My brother can. I work out a lot. Just not. Eh, whatever. Okay, bye.